The Shields Up program uh, was brought up by CISA uh, uh, from a critical infrastructure and cybersecurity perspective to say because of geopolitical events, uh, the Ukrainian war and these other threat actors, that we need to make a concerted effort to protect our critical infrastructure. And although my background is in power and utilities, oil and gas, et cetera, critical infrastructure encompasses a, a pretty wide uh a breadth of industries, uh, tier one networking, food manufacturing, etc. So when this came out, the the big question for the industries were, well, why now? Okay, Ukraine war flare ups that that makes a lot of sense. But more importantly, what do we what do we do? Having the shields always been up for critical infrastructure. Um, the question started coming like, well, will the shields ever go down? Like, will we ever have? Because uh, regardless of war or geopolitical entanglements, uh, there have always been these threats. We've always known that we need to protect our critical infrastructure against these threats. So what's the practicality of something like a Shields Up program? It's been about six months since they released it. And so it was just a time to look back and say, well, what has really happened? Has anything major happened? And really, what does the industry do with it from, from this point forward? I think there's there's two or three key takeaways. One is um, the, the the amount of exposure and the amount of focus on the Ukrainian war. Um, we tend to have short-term memory issues, right? So now that that's gone on, uh, there was a lot of advisories about Russian threat actors, what they may do as a response to our involvement. That's kind of downticked. There hasn't been many advisories from CISA related to our particular sector in this particular threat actor. That doesn't mean to say that those threats are now gone. And even to, uh, we see now different Chinese actors or ransomware groups, they, they didn't all of a sudden stop operations just because there was a war going on. So I think it's takeaway number one is that Shields Up was great to garner attention, but honestly, we've been dealing with this for decades now. Um, number two is, is more of a hope in that we have this great messaging and we have the eyes and ears of the executive branch of CISOs um, that we don't squander this opportunity. And some of us that have been in the industry for a while may say, well, Shields have always been up and this is just a marketing thing. No, we need to capitalize on this opportunity to where if you're a power plant or you're a provider or you're a manufacturing floor, there may be these security things you've been trying to get into budget for years. This is the catalyst. This is the opportunity to do that. Even if you think it's maybe hyped or maybe too political, now's your chance to get in those security controls that you've been fighting for for years. So don't don't waste the opportunity. Um, and I think third is a little more of a look back. You know, we all remember kind of the DHS terrorism alerts and how we never went below yellow. But again, it was like we need to focus. We need to put out some messaging, some processes that we can follow. And I hope that doesn't happen with Shields Up. Or sometime in the next few years, it just goes away. Um, I hope that for CISA or even for private industry, we come out and say, uh, it's less about shields up, but how do we maintain this posture? Perhaps even a posture we should have been maintaining all along. What are the budgetary, the resources, the technology, uh, interactions with government? What are the permanent things that we can do to make our infrastructure more secure, as opposed to just a point in time like shields up is, is providing that? So uh, since Aber is a industrial control system, network monitoring and visibility solution. If you think of in enterprises and SIMs and SOARs and data lakes, and there's all this technology that helps bring together the data that's necessary to perform security operations. Well, in industrial applications, that's still a difficult thing. Um, the networks are highly distributed. They're very specific with the protocols they use. And so you need a specific solution that can scale and that's cost-effective that the operators can use. Uh, and for Sinsaber, more importantly, something that empowers those operators. Uh, most of the technology that's being deployed now for security, you just kind of sit back and go, well, the blinky box is over there doing security stuff and you really have no control over that, which for control system operators is a hard thing to swallow. So at Sinsaber, we're looking to provide this technology to empower the operator and then allow them to send all that security data to whatever other technology they need whether that's an enterprise sim or a control system historian, it doesn't matter to us.